Today you're going to learn about 10 things the USCIS is looking for and that you can do to prove your marriage is real. Hey there and welcome to our channel. My name is Margarita. And my name is Dixon. We make videos for people like ourselves who are going through the marriage adjustment of status process. They are based on our own personal experience, the experience we have as lawyers, and the experience of the members of our marriage immigration method. Remember, our channel is meant to give you guys the confidence to go through this process completely on your own. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're always up to date. Now, the legitimacy of your relationship is the entire basis for the immigration benefits you seek when you go through the marriage immigration process. Ultimately, the USAS will make a decision regarding your relationship based only on the paperwork you submit and maybe during an interview if you're scheduled for one. So, it's important to give them everything you can to demonstrate that your relationship is real or bona fide, as they call it. And be sure to stick around to number 10, where we share one of the most important things to do in order to demonstrate the realness of your relationship. Okay, so number one are tax returns and bank statements. These are some of the most important forms of evidence to include with your application. This is because one of the major indicators of a legitimate relationship is commingling of finances. Basically, the USCIS sees the sharing of finances and financial responsibility as a strong indicator that you have a real marriage. So, regarding taxes, the USCIS wants to see that you're filing jointly as a married couple. Additionally, you should be filing jointly for every year that you have been married. If this is not the case and there are reasons why you didn't file jointly, you will need to explain the circumstances why and be prepared to discuss these circumstances again if you're called for an interview. Just a quick bonus tip. You can still file taxes jointly even if your spouse doesn't have a social security number or an ITIN. You will just have to file it on paper, but always talk to your CPA first. Regarding bank statements, this is even more evidence of mixing assets. But for this evidence to support your marriage, you both need to have your names on the account. Additionally, you both have to use this account. It's not enough to have the account in both of your names, but you both actually need to be using it. So, that means you will also want to provide copies of bank statements clearly demonstrating that both spouses have activity within that account. Also, this applies to credit cards, which is another great example of evidence that you can provide. But, here's an important consideration. You need to be jointly using these accounts. The reason is that having such accounts without any use actually can be flagged by the USCIS as an indication of fraud. And this is because it gives the appearance that such accounts were opened jointly, but only for the purposes of immigration. So providing evidence is extremely important because without careful consideration, you can actually harm yourself accidentally. Okay, so the next one is living together. Another major indicator is whether you live together and provide evidence of those living arrangements. If you own a home together, you would ideally want to have both of your names on the deed. And if you're renting, then you will want to have both of your names on the lease agreement. But what if you're living together in a rental, but one of you is not on the lease? You will want to try to get a new lease agreement with both of your names on it, or alternatively, you can just amend the existing lease to include your partner. But we understand that adjusting leases can be an issue. So there's one more lesser known thing that you can do. So be sure to stick around to number nine, where we will be sharing this trick. But here's another tip when it comes to this point. You're going to also want to include legible copies of your driver's licenses and or identity cards, but with matching addresses. You don't want to be called into an interview and asked, why don't your driver's licenses match? How would they know that the two of you guys are not living at two different addresses? Definitely head to the DMV and get matching licenses. Also, let us know with a comment if you grabbed our free bona fide marriage evidence list. If not, Check the description for the link to get your free copy and let us know in the comments if you found this list helpful. Now, let's talk about money transfers. Another great form of evidence is demonstrating that you send money to each other. Obviously, this will be difficult to do with cash, but some other ways include providing copies of statements from apps like Zelle, Cash App, Venmo, etc. And keep in mind, if you send money to each other in the early stages of your relationship, such as when you were dating, you should definitely include this as evidence. It helps to show not only that you share finances, but by including pre-marriage evidence, it shows how your relationship actually began. Thus, providing more insight into your relationship for the adjudicating officer. Okay, number four. So what about rings, wedding, and family? We get it. Wedding in, weddings in America are expensive. And that's totally fine. You don't need anything crazy to show your relationship. But who is in attendance? Just know that having family involved and taking pictures at the event are big indicators to the USCIS that you have a real relationship. Also, if you did make arrangements for your wedding, 
Be sure to include receipts for everything you bought. And this leads us to the next point, which is to include receipts for the wedding rings. Ideally, you'd want to have receipts demonstrating that you purchased your rings prior to the wedding. Now let's talk about pictures. Pictures, while not the strongest form of evidence, are definitely a must to include. Like mentioned in the last chapter, pictures at your wedding with each other's families and friends are huge. They go a long way in showing that you have a real relationship, since family involvement would be very unlikely in a fraudulent marriage. Next, you will want to include a variety of pictures that are perhaps in different seasons, in different locations, and definitely from any travels. Remember, the key here is to show that you have a relationship and a life together. It's not about sending them everything you've got, so take time to think about the picture that the pictures you're submitting are creating. Now, before we move to number six, just a quick reminder that you do not have to go through this process alone. We know how overwhelming this all seems to you guys at this moment since we've been there ourselves, so make sure to apply to our program if you'd rather save time and be a part of a super supportive immigrant community. Okay, so number six, messages. This is a big one, and especially for those of you with newer relationships. You will want to include transcripts or screenshots of conversations you've had together. Some really great ones to include would be from the time when you were getting to know each other, times when you arranged events together, and any other moments of significance that can demonstrate your real relationship. Additionally, try to get these screenshots or transcripts with dates included. This also goes for any phone conversations too. And here's a little bonus for those of you that have conversations in a language other than English. If you submit these screenshots, you'll need to submit a translation. And yes, a translation of every single line of text. And be sure to submit the translation with the correct certification language and submit the original language screenshots in addition to the translated transcript. Both are required. Number seven, travel. Travel is another great piece of evidence to submit with your application. Like mentioned earlier, photos are definitely a must. But keep in mind that photos should clearly show the Grand Canyon or whatever behind you or any other identifiable object. But that's not all to submit when it comes to travel. You also want to include receipts for the trip and even flight confirmations showing both of your names. And then definitely submit receipts from during your trip, especially if you do some fun activities together or go on any excursions. Now let's talk about pets and babies. Pets and children are another great form of evidence to include with your file. Obviously, having a child together or making preparations to conceive a child are great at demonstrating your relationship and life together. For this, you could include birth certificates, letters from your doctor validating your pregnancy, and even documentation regarding going through adoption or a surrogacy process. But we know that not all of you will be pregnant or intending to have children for your own personal reasons, and that's why pets are another great form of evidence to include. Do your individual pets live together at your shared home? Do you have medical bills for your mutual pets? Did you surprise your spouse with a puppy on Christmas? These are all great to include and try to find evidence that clearly shows your mutual involvement, whether it be with children, pets, or otherwise. Real quick, did you know that preparing a solid initial green card application can provide you with numerous immigration advantages? With a well-crafted and error-free application, you can have your interview waived, avoid RFEs, and make your life easier when you start the removal of conditions application and then applying for citizenship. That's exactly what our marriage immigration method is designed to help you achieve. Get the winning game plan crafted from our personal experience with this exact same process and experience as immigration lawyers. You can find the details to apply to our method in the links below. Now number nine, special letters from friends and family. Letters from friends and family are another great form of evidence. Sounds obvious, right? Well, you'd be surprised that these letters don't mean much unless you do one thing. And that one thing is to have your friends and family get these letters notarized. You're going to want them to get these letters notarized and even have them scan their driver's licenses or IEDs on their letter as well. You do this because otherwise there's no way for the USCIS officer to validate whether the letter actually was written by the person it's claiming to be written by. And we both know that the USCIS will not likely follow up. So if you don't get it notarized, then you basically wasted your time and the time of your friends and family because this piece of evidence will likely be placed to the side and given minimal weight, if any. Additionally, for those of you who stuck around from point number two, these letters can be a great way of demonstrating that you live with your spouse even without an official documentation such as a shared deed or lease especially if you're currently living with family members. You can have landlords, neighbors, friends, and or family who know about your living arrangement write these letters or affidavits on your behalf 
describing the fact that they've witnessed and know about you both living together. But again, don't forget to have them get these letters notarized so you have some form of legitimate evidence showing your cohabitation. Now let's talk about number 10, which is evolving evidence. Finally, we come to one of the most important forms of evidence. This would be evolving evidence. You want to include a healthy ratio of evidence showing your entire relationship from beginning to right now. Meaning, even after you file your initial green card application, you must continue collecting new evidence. And there are a few very real reasons for this. Number one, it shows you have a real relationship because legitimate relationships continue and evolve over time. Number two, you may be asked for new evidence if you get called in for a green card interview and you'll want to be prepared ahead of time for that possibility. Number three, if you do get a request for evidence for new relationship evidence, which we've seen a lot of these lately, you can save a ton of time if you already have it collected and can respond to the RFE right away. Number four, you will need to provide updated bona fide marriage evidence when you apply for the removal of conditions on your green card. Number five, lastly, you will likely need new evidence if you get called in for an interview for your removal of conditions process. Keep in mind that this is by no means a comprehensive list of bona fide marriage evidence examples. But this should definitely get you guys started. We hope that you found this video useful. Let us know if you're curious about some evidence you are planning to include in the comments or if you have any unique ideas for marriage evidence to support your other fellow immigrant couples. Good luck with your green card application process. And be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we will see you with our next video.